If you watched our Weird Weapons in Call of Duty video, then you may have noticed that a handful of the weapons in that video were categorized as anachronistic, such as the Famas Valerice in Black Ops 1. It was designed and made in the early 2000s, while appearing here in the mid 1960s. That's the basis for this video here today. In this video we're going to go over usable primary and secondary weapons throughout Call of Duty that are out of place and realistically should not be options for the player in the first place. Obviously not every single anachronistic gun made it on this list, we're simply highlighting the outliers that we found the most egregious. Without further ado, let's get started. I reckon we should go over what exactly we mean by anachronistic, as it might be overwhelming at first glance. We followed two primary criteria for this. 1. When was the weapon made? And 2. When does the game take place? For example, if the weapon in question is manufactured after when the game takes place, then it's anachronistic. Going the other way, weapons that did not see any widespread use during the time or let alone at all, are also anachronistic. We're also going to exclude fictional one-offs like the Mayhem and hoaxes like the SDK 9mm for convenience sake. Starting with Call of Duty 4 and kicking off this list is the RPD. On paper it doesn't sound too bad, it's an LMG with a reputable service record and outstanding performance. Until you read that this gun was first made in 1939 and ceased Soviet service in 1961. So why are they still using it in 2011? It had already been superseded and replaced by the PKM. Our best guess is that it was intended for the Op 4, but that doesn't explain the absence of the PKM altogether. We find ourselves in a similar position with the MP44, the early designation for the Sturmgewehr. Of course, this gun laid the foundations of the modern day assault rifle, but just look at the other, much more modern ARs the game has to offer, such as the M16, M4 Carbine, and the G36C. The only reason it's in the game is because it's a throwback weapon from COD 2. No other reasons. I'm not so sure that shotguns originating from the American Civil War would still be used in World War II. But alas, we have the double barrel as one of two shotguns in World of War, along with the M1897 trench gun. A more modern example for the time could have been the M30 Luftwaffe drilling, with its third barrel for rifle rounds. That one was manufactured in the 1930s, and would later be added to Sledgehammer's World War II in 2017. The M1911. I know what you're thinking. Hey, wait, it was made in 1911, how can it be anachronistic? One thing, the magazine capacity. This M1911 holds 8 rounds rather than 7, and according to multiple sources, including IMFDB, 8 round versions were not produced UNTIL THE 1980s, WHEN IT WAS REPLACED BY THE Beretta 92 ANYWAY! This chubby little chunk of metal is the Cedars Ranger, a sawn-off shotgun that was originally produced in 1915 during World War I. Of course, it's had some cosmetic changes leading up to 2009, but it's still very speculative that these modern military men are still running around with a near 100 year old boomstick. There's four other much more modern shotguns to choose from, and yet this is still Mason's favorite weapon in card history. The Model 1887 was only really added into the game because some of the Infinity Ward developers had been watching too much Terminator 2 before working on the game. A near 125 year old weapon being flip cocked and reloaded by telekinesis is a bit too much even compared to the Ranger. As Aikis said, pick the other shotguns. Plus the Spaz 12 is now the best shotgun to use ever since these things got nerfed in 2010. As was already mentioned in the Weird Weapons video, the FAMAS in Black Ops is anachronistic. The original F1 was manufactured in 1972, which already breaks the timeline by 5 to 10 years. And then the Valerise comes around, which was made in the early 2000s, stretching the limits of the timeline to the point where you'd swear you were playing Black Ops 2 instead. If you've watched the archived Weird Weapons video, you'll know that the G11 is a Weird Weapon by itself. It uses cases ammunition, it doesn't even have a barrel, 
It looks like it came from the future even in 2023, and it still breaks the timeline, as only a few prototypes were manufactured in the early 1990s. Honestly, there's no point with Black Ops. Most weapons in the game break the timeline by 10 years or so, so let's just head to Modern Warfare 3. We've mentioned this one a handful of times in a few other videos that are now archived, but the FMG-9 never entered production. It only ever existed as a mock-up prototype, and for that matter, I find it highly unlikely for special operatives to be running around with a pistol-caliber machine pistol that folds open like a butterfly knife. The KSG-12 was possibly the newest gun in the world at the time. By the time Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer started to work on the game in April, the KSG had only just finished being made in real life. It was also the shotgun's first ever appearance in a video game, which to be fair isn't surprising now I've just talked about it. With Black Ops 2 starting to feature fictional futuristic weapons such as the PDW-57 and the Peacekeeper, my choice is the semi-believable evolution of the QBZ-95. The Type 25, as the name implies, was likely manufactured or entered into military service in 2025, along with its LNG counterpart, the QBB. I mean, I guess Treyarch really liked making more modern versions of classic service weapons. I don't know. Speaking of, with the XM8 project being cancelled in 2005, how does the m 8 one exist in Black Ops 2? It's like Xbox Ahoy speculated. Sometime within those 20 years, maybe the US military took an interest in reviving the platform due to some new quirks found in the weapon, and so the m 8 one was entered into service by 2025. I mean, the m 8 7 exists in Black Ops 3 as an evolution. Your guess is as good as ours. We should probably go off on a limb by mentioning that the Ghosts AK-12 and subsequently the A-Dub AK-12 are anachronistic because of the fact they never entered service in the shape they're in here. They are the so-called AK-200 mock-ups, which were ambidextrous AK concepts that made it quite far in development before getting turned into what we have today. Honestly, I'd rather take this over what we got. So according to IMFDB, the SC-2010 is essentially the FAL originating from Peru that just adds a sight rail, telescopic stock and a muzzle brake. Which means it's still the same old FAL design from all the way back in 1951. Sure, it's called the 2010, but the original gun was still over 60 years old by 2013, and all they seemingly did was update it slightly to fit modern requirements. There's nine other assault rifles in the game, including the Maverick, and you still want to use a relic from the embers of World War II? The M1 Garand is one of the most well-known and reliable self-loading rifles of its time. But, how is a weapon of its age still surviving and in one piece over 110 years later? Well, our best guess is that it's a replica, which makes sense when you consider that Sledgehammer Armory is stamped under the rear sight instead of Springfield Armory, which, okay, out of game, is likely just Sledgehammer abiding copyright. But even dumber, it's statistically better than its evolution, the Mark 14, that was in-game from launch. There's other World War era weapons in this game as well, such as the Sten, the MP40, and even the 1911, but we feel the M1 is the outlier here. The M1 Irons, even more so, has to be a replica. It's based off the Lamat 1861 cap and ball black powder revolver, so the original version is almost 200 years old and didn't even shoot proper bullets and according to Wikipedia, it saw service in the American Civil War in 1865, as well as the Franco-Prussian War of 1871. On top of that, it's not even accurate to the original design, because the original Lamat revolver could hold 9 shots, whereas the M1 irons can only hold 6. It can, however, be put to 9 rounds by upgrading the weapon in exo-zombies. Aftermarket and Bubba are the only two words I can use to describe the model 1891 Mosin Nagant in Black Ops 3. It is a sniper in drag. Hell, it's not even called the Nagant. It's labeled as the Dragoon. Which, okay, what's the nickname for the Nagant according to the Swedish Army Museum and Wikipedia? But yeah, somehow this freak child of a Mosin is a Mosin. Captain Sergei is most definitely twisting in his grave right now. It's not like the shotguns in this game are the spawn of Satan, so how about we have another one? The Olympia returned from the original Black Ops for... some reason. This was such a late release, so late that I think COD 4 Remastered was being sold separately by that point. But for a weapon that was, ironically, anachronistic in the original Black Ops, it's back and better than ever thanks to the new Treyarch shotgun mechanics. 
And for those of you wondering the year on this thing, 1972. So it's over 90 years old. These damn replicas just keep on coming. On to the third oldest difference in time, the Trencher in Infinite Warfare, a weapon also known as the Bergman MP28. 1928. And this game is set in the year 2187. So we are looking at the relic from the wake of the Great Depression that is now nearing 260 years of age. Not even Nokia's can live for that long. The AK-47 was quite old by COD 4. It was older by Modern Warfare 3. Then it was ancient by Advanced Warfare. And now it's considered prehistoric in Infinite Warfare with the Volk. There's even lore behind this gun's existence in 2187. It's what the set death cobbled together with whatever AK part kits they could find, or presumably stole from the Earth's government, and then modified them to hell and back. In the campaign, after the attack on Geneva, Griff is clearly excited when he gets his hands on one to replicate. This could imply that the Volk is an older design by Infinite Warfare standards. What do we do with a drunken sailor? Send him into battle with a weapon from the last epoch. Yes, the blunderbuss. It was an advanced warfare, but this is also a sledgehammer game. There isn't even a concrete date as to when the first ever firearm of this kind was made, but most research traces it back to the 1600s. So you've got a pirate gun from the years of naval warfare in 1945. Better grab a bucket of gravel to shove down that barrel, because good luck finding ammo for this thing normally. Actually, let's be a tad more realistic with our picks. The Cladmore, also known as the Claymore, is a Gaelic sword used by the warriors of Scottish clans during the Lancastrian period in Great Britain. And yet, after all these centuries of the weapon not being affected by time, wear, erosion, or being put in a history museum, it's now in the hands of a World War II soldier. Or is that a World War II demo man now? Now we're getting into a real treat, because Black Ops 4 taking place in the 2040s, the Argus is technically anachronistic in the Black Ops timeline because, according to Black Ops 3, it started production in 2058. Sure, Black Ops 3 is set in 2065, but Black Ops 4, which is a prequel may I add, is set in between 2040 to 2050. Now we are actually returning to proper Black Ops 1 levels of anachronism, folks. The Galil was another anachronistic weapon in the original Black Ops. Made in 1972, it returned in Black Ops 3 along with the Ballistic Knife. And then it returned again in Black Ops 4 with the Ballistic Knife. Is there any explanation for this? The KN57 was already in the game from day 1, and there's other alternatives such as the ICR-7 and the SWAT. And then the Dilil returned again in Cold War with the Ballistic Knife. What is it with Treyarch's unhealthy obsession with these two weapons being added at the same time? It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that the Carabiner 98 Kurtz made it on here, arguably the world's greatest bolt-action rifle even by today's standards. But in the hands of a skilled operator on Shoot House, it's quite the weird sight to behold. It does make perfect sense for this game specifically if you play the campaign. The Urzik Militia using this weapon quite often is parallel to how insurgents in the Middle East used weapons of yester conflict in today's climate. Finally, the RPG gained its stabilizing fins while shooting. Yeah, that's been bugging me ever since COD 4. But outside of that, this is a rocket launcher from 1961, with a whole biography's worth of praise in reliability and service record. So in practicality, it might not be valid for a spot on this list. But then you look at the other launchers. Would you rather have a dedicated lock-on system for much higher damage, or would you rather return to Monkey? We covered the PPSH-41 in the Multiplayer History Off video, and for good reason. It is a great submachine gun, even up against competing ones like the Mac-10 and even the Kipparis. That iconic 71 run drum makes it a staple among its peers, but it's still a gun from the early years of World War II. And even then, the Soviets decided that this thing was too expensive to manufacture and quickly replaced it with the PPS-43, which isn't as well known. Now this is what I was waiting to get to. The 410 Ironhide was added during Season 6, and it's a clunky, chunky boy that works just like the Argus, where the pellets condense into a tighter spot when aiming down sights. It might also put the FAMAS to shame with its ability to break time and space. Cold War is set during the actual Cold War in 1984. When do you think the Ironhide was made? The 1950s? 1970s? Think of a year. 
You're wrong, it's 2019! Treyarch, what were you thinking? I'm guessing adding the nail gun made you go insane in the membrane? But if you thought the Cold War was bad for adding the Ironhide, oh lord, in the words of Judas Priest, you've got another thing coming. The EX1 is... the EM1 from Advanced Warfare. It's from 2054 at the least! Do you need any more proof that this is going to be Advanced Warfare 2? I genuinely do not have anything else to say other than it has unique attachments and that one 8-bit bundle, but why the EM1 of all guns? And lo and behold, a weapon hanging onto the dying days of Vanguard's life cycle. The fucking F2000! The bip bip speedy taunt assault rifle of Modern Warfare 2 was added into the game by Sledgehammer, like every other weapon in the game, to pump content into Warzone before that died as well! And while it might have 2000 in the name, the F2000 was actually made in 1995. Still 50 years after World War II ended! Just get me off this shit show of a circus and put me back on a good game, please! So far in Modern Warfare 2's life cycle, all the weapons are decently balanced, except for one that seemingly needs a bit of a buff the M16A2 from 1961. No wonder it's a struggle bus to kill with this thing, even on shipment. This is a Vietnam War relic, and it also doesn't help that there are no barrels that help with damage range at all, leaving you helpless with building a decent set of attachments. Here we have the Carl Gustav M4, a recoilless rifle with some high projectile velocity, high direct damage, but low explosive radius. And yep, there's a difference between recoilless rifles and rocket launchers. And yes, the M4 was manufactured as recently as 2014, but we're going back to the original year of design, with the Gustav M1 all the way back in 1946. And the M1 almost looks the same as the M4 anyway, it's just been modernised in a few places. And like the RPG, it doesn't have any lock-on system to help with destroying vehicles like the Javelin. Just be thankful it isn't the Moors from Ghost in Advanced- WAIT A SECOND!